Hi, this is Sean. Welcome to Guitar Reference Guy. In today's lesson, I'm going to be taking you through the classic Dead Flowers by the Rolling Stones. You can find this on the Sticky Fingers album. It was released in 1971. This is one of my favorite Stones tunes. It's got a real laid-back feel. It's got a country sound to it because around this period of time, Keith Richards had a pretty good friendship with Graham Parsons, and the friendship definitely had an influence on his songwriting. Who is this song for? This is perfect for the total beginner who's just learning how to strum some chords, or for someone that's been playing a while that wants to learn a great solo. In today's lesson, I'm going to take you through the entire song, take you through the chord progression, strum pattern, and I've broken the solo that Mick Taylor plays through a series of eight licks slash phrases. I'm also going to talk about the uh, harmonic analysis of the solo and what he's doing over each chord. And for those of you that have a difficult time with that, I'm going to have some music theory basics on the scales you can use to start creating your own solos and work towards playing mixed solo. I've created a PDF and a jam track for this lesson. If you click the link below, it'll take you to my website. Also really help me out. It takes a lot of time to make these videos and every little bit helps. We have a lot to do, so let's dig in. And thanks so much for visiting me at guitarreferenceguide.com. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play through the intro and then I'm going to break it down for you. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, so this is in the key of D major. D would be my one chord. A is my five chord. G is my four chord. And then D is my one chord. And these are the only chords in the entire song. This whole song is just three chords. So as you can see, it's totally perfect for the beginner. Now, pickup is gonna be on the four. So when I come in with the tune, it's gonna count one, two, three, four, and one, and then I'm in. Now that pickup, I'm playing a D chord, take my index finger off and my middle finger off, and I'm gonna strum two eighth notes, four and, and then I'm gonna hammer those fingers down when we come into the measure. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and, and there's my strum pattern. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Now I'm gonna go to the A, middle finger comes off, ring finger slides over, second finger comes down. One, two, and three, and four, and. I go to the G. One, two, and three, and four, and back to the D. Two and three and four and. And there is my intro. Then that is going to repeat without the pickup a total of four times and that's going to be my verse. Now I'm going to move into the pre-chorus. The pre-chorus is going to go from an A to a D. Two times on A, two times on D. Okay, now I'm going to kick into the chorus. Chorus is going to be G to D, and we're going to do the G twice and the D twice, and we're going to go through this cycle. We're going to repeat that a total of three times. Now the last part of the chorus is going to be the same four uh, bars as the intro and the verse. D to A, back to G, back to D. And now we're back to the top of the form of the song at the verse and then this entire thing just repeats. So the form stays the same throughout the whole song. And that would be the strumming pattern. Uh, that would be the basic chords for all sections of the song. And now we're going to move into the solo section of the guitar lesson. Okay, so the first thing we're going to discuss before we jump into the Mick Taylor licks is we're just going to discuss the basic scales you can use to get started with this. D major pentatonic would be the first scale 
that we use to go through this solo. Now, I'm gonna start with the 10th fret, and I have seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, 10, seven, 10. Now, a great objective or goal will be to find your D notes within this scale. There's my D note, there's my D note, and there's my D note. So there's your D major pentatonic scale. I also want you to start it from here. There's your D note, there's your D note, and there's your D note. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna play along with the backing track, and I'm just gonna play around with this scale. Now the whole idea is to have most of my ideas resolve around a D note, because it's in the key of D, this is gonna sound pretty good. This is in the key of D major, D major pentatonic is gonna work great for this. So here we go, I'm gonna put on the backing track and then give you a couple of ideas and we're gonna move into the next scale before we get into the licks. There's my D. So as you can tell, that worked pretty well. Just playing the bass pentatonic scale, kind of making the D note my main focus. Now, if you look at the key of D major, and I go to the next scale, which would be my D major scale, my diatonic scale would look something like this. Here we would be adding to the pentatonic scale four, five, six, and we'll be adding the seven. Now what we're gonna do is we're, instead of playing the full diatonic scale, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just add the fourth. And why this is important is because the chord progression is D, A, G, back to D. If I play the pentatonic scale, there is no G in there. There's just a D, there's an E, there's an F sharp, and there's an A. So the A's there and the D's there, but the G's not there. So to get the G in there, we have to add the fourth to the pentatonic scale. And that works really well. So the next step would be, as the chords are moving by, for us to target the root notes of the chords as they're moving in real time. For example, when the song is on a D, the D chord, try and hit that D note. Then when it goes to the A, then when it goes to the G, and then we're back to the D. And that's gonna help outline the chords a little bit, and you hear that a lot in his solo. So now I'm gonna play along with the backing track, and I am going to try and follow the changes by just on the first beat of the change, trying to hit that chord tone. Here we go. D. There's my A. Need to get to G. Back to D. D. A. To my G. Back to D. So as you can tell, that worked really well. So every time the chord made the change, I made it my goal to try and find the root note of that chord and try and try to land on it. Now that's a great way to start, but once you, you have a handle on what you know where the notes are, try and use your ear, because there's two other notes in each chord that are gonna work good. I'm not gonna get into playing with chord tones and triads and all that, the rest in this lesson, but uh, that's a great place to start. Start with just the root note of the key, and then, move on to the root notes of the chords and try and line them up with uh, the chords as the chords are moving by. So the next part of the lesson, we are now going to go into Mick Taylor's licks. And this will make a little more sense now because you have a little bit of a vocabulary of the main, main scales that he's using, mostly pentatonic, but then adding that, adding that fourth in every once in a while works really well. Cool. 
Okay, so now we have some fundamental basics on the scales that McTaylor is using. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure our guitar is on the bridge pickup. You could also put on the neck pickup if you want. The bridge pickup is going to give it a little bit more twang. Um, I'm using a 335 here, but any guitar is going to work great. All right, so lick number one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the lick, then I'm just going to break it down. Here we go. Lick number one. It's going to sound something like this. And I'll get a little wiggle at the end. Now here what's happening is I'm starting, this is very important, that you understand what beat the lick comes in on. So we're on the G, one, two, and that's going to bring us into the D, one, two, three, and four, and, and then I'm going to hold this note up, index finger on the B note, pinky on the A note, come back to the G string, and release. And what that's going to do is that's going to imply the A chord. So here with this lick, he's implying two chords. When he's bending this note up and hitting this note, he's implying the D chord. And then when he releases it, he's implying the A chord, and that's the chord that's in play. And that's lick number one. The hardest part of this is holding that, getting that, this, while everything is ringing out. That's going to be lick number one. Lick number two is going to start the same way as lick number one, also comes in on the third beat, but then we have a variation on the second half, and that's going to sound like this. One, two. One more time, really slow. One, two. Okay, so here what I'm doing, coming in the same way I did with the first lick, but now I'm playing, coming back to the B note before I get to the next part of the lick. So instead of just going, I'm going, pinky comes down to the A note, and then we're going to do a pre-bend right here on the E note, whole step bend, which is two frets, release. Pull off, 9th fret, 7th fret, 9th fret, 7th fret. One more time. And that would be lick number 2. Now we're going to move on to lick number 3. Ironically, it's going to start the same way as lick number 2. Exactly the same. Also on the third beat. Then the second half looks a little different. Here we go. time. Okay, so here, start the same way on the third beat. Coming to the B. Now we jump all the way down to the D note um, on the high E string. Now we're still on the D chord. There's the D note. Now we're bending this up a whole step. The A note. Release. 10. 8. 10, bend the 9th fret up a whole step, 7, 9, 7, 7, and then this would be lick number 3. Okay, now we're going to do lick number 4. One more time. Instead of coming back here, I'm playing on the, this comes in on the and of three, one, two, three, and four, and, and then I'm jumping right up to the A here at the 10th fret, 9th fret, whole step, bend, release, pull off to the D note, 7th fret, 9th fret, 7th fret, 9th fret, 7th fret. This is almost just like lick number two. Lick number five. 
starts the same way as lick number two. Now we're coming down to the ninth fret. We're going to bend up a whole step here. Pinky. And then once again, we're implying that D chord by bending this up a whole step. That's implying the third of a D. And then when we release, we're implying the A. And that's the chord that's in play. And that will be lick number six, uh, lick number five. Okay, so this will be lick number six, very similar to lick number three. Starting the lick the same way on the third beat, everything's the same as the second lick. There's a lot like lick number three. Actually, almost everything's the same. Back to the 10th fret of the high E string, whole step, bend on the 10th fret, 10th fret, 8th fret, 10th fret, 9th fret, whole step end, and then we're at the D note, we're plucking that twice, and look, there he is on the D note, implying the D note. Really slow. Now I'm going to go to lick number 7. Okay, lick number 7. It's going to be a lot like lick number six, but it's starting at the tail end of lick number six, the same way tail number six ended. Let's get that a little better. Here we go. So here, this is over a D chord, starting on the D note. Whole step on the 10th fret of the high E string, 10th fret, bend up a whole step, release, 10th fret, 8th fret, back to 10th fret, 9th fret, bend, release, whole step, 7th fret, 9th fret, then we're going to go back to the 9th fret, whole step, bend, pull off to 7, 9th fret, 7, and that happens a little quicker. One more time, that whole thing. And that will be lick number seven. Now we're doing the last lick, last number, uh, last lick number eight. And that's the first half of the lick. Really slow. We're gonna play seven to nine to seven. Whole step end on on the uh, E note. Pinky on the tenth fret of the B string, the A note. And then we hold that bend, we release, and pull off. And then we pull that off. And then ninth fret on the D, seventh fret on the D. First half of the lick. Last half of the lick, or we, we more or less call this a phrase, we're gonna pull off from nine to seven, and then 7th fret on the E string to the 5th fret. And then the last half of the lick, so here I'm sliding 9 to 7, 5, 7, 5. So up to there. last part of the phrase will sound like this. Index finger on five, slide from nine, seven, just fly, uh, five slides from seven to nine to seven. And then we're on the fifth of the D. Let me do that one more time. Those would be all the licks or and phrases. Most of these are like phrases. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the whole thing in its entirety at a slower tempo.